Welcome back for another installment. So what we have here is a cardboard mock-up of what exists inside the system, okay? Fashioned out of stainless steel and it exists right in this area right in here. So on top, the combustion zone, the throat, and then reduction zone, okay? So I made this little diagram that kind of explains what I've done over the last few test, testing cycles. In the beginning, I had the ash grate down here at the bottom, right? And so what did I get? Uh, high pressure. So that means when I talk about pressure, it's the difference in pressure between the top, top of the preheater to the bottom of the, of the reduction zone here, okay? So high pressure means that the system was kind of clogged up. That's a, um, you think of it as, as a restriction of gas flow through the system, right? Um, I got high combustion zone temperature that's up in here um, to the point where I was melting Inconel thermocouples. So we got really high, like 1200 C. And uh, low tar production. So the only good thing about it was that there was very low tar. So it was burning up a lot of the tar as it worked down through the combustion or through the reduction zone. Uh, but there wasn't really enough gas flow through it to run the generator to any significant amount. There was just too much restriction through the system. Uh, then I moved it, secondly, I moved it way up to the top, um, almost near the throat. So what did I get? Very low differential pressure. So we're moving a lot of gas through. Very low combustion temperature. Uh, too low, really, to, to be effective. It was less than 800 C up here in the combustion zone. Uh, and high tar production, really high tar was coming out. And it did run the generator okay, but it was really tarry. And it eventually just kind of clogged up. Uh, finally, I moved it to right about 50% mark. Okay, what I get? Good differential pressure, so it was still pretty high. It was off the scale of the the sensor I have in there is plus and minus two kilopascals, and it was off the scale, so I know it was much greater than two kilopascals. Um, that's, again, we're talking about the differential pressure across the stack. Um, ideal combustion and reduction zone temperatures. Um, it would kind of peak up to about 1,000 C, but no more, from about 800 to 1,000 in the combustion zone, and then 860-ish, and it held really steady in the reduction zone. Low tar production, so the tar um, was was pretty good. All right, uh, and then the generator ran actually pretty well. So a couple of other things I've made since my last video, uh, some changes. I got rid of the cyclonic filter that was a remnant of you know, previous designs. So I put in this kind of hokey, um, uh, you know, muffler pipe affair to. Um, to replace the the cyclonic filter. The cyclonic filter was just clogging up and it was very difficult to clean, which one can argue is is the whole point of the filter is to filter out those that soot. But what I'm gonna do is just trap it up here in preheater and I have a mechanism to flush it out that's easier than cleaning, disassembling and cleaning the, the cyclonic filter. The next change I made, a big one, was I added this blower to the output of the, the gas output of the gas fire. It's disconnected right now, but it, what it does is effectively turn the, the engine into a supercharged engine. It has a light supercharging effect. So it forces gases into the engine. Um, and, and what that does is allow me to run the whole system at a higher pressure, higher differential pressure, thus reducing, uh, you know, it crack more, cracks and burns up more tar uh, um, while still being able to get gas flow through the system. And that works pretty well, and I have to disassemble it occasionally to, to uh, flush out tar with some carb cleaner. But, but by and large, this is a, a good addition. I got this from McMaster Car. You can find them. Uh, it's, uh, well, you'll see it. Just do a, a search on McMaster dot com uh the generator still is plagued by the problem of 
of not really putting out a lot of power. I can get maybe 2000 watts out of it, but it just doesn't seem like the gas has the energy density that it, that it from pro propane or natural gas. But we're working on that. Okay. Um, other than that, it works really pretty well. And so now that I'm getting it kind of perfect, the design nailed down, I can turn my attention back to the automation. So as I mentioned in previous videos, um, the idea here is that the whole thing runs in an automated fashion where I can just start it and it will, it will when it's at the right temperature, it'll switch over, start the generator, run, it'll uh, manage any problems it has. Um, so it'll be a combination of, of valving and software. Okay, um, and refer to my previous videos on any of this as that will help you to understand um, like how, how I went about building that, that hearth. Okay, uh, comments are, are always welcome. Thanks, bye.